This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. All right, let's move on. Rocky Malvia is going to help Farouk beat Chains, and now The Rock is born. He joins the nation. Looking back in hindsight, pretty major moment in WWF history here. I mean, if The Rock doesn't join the nation, I'm not saying we wouldn't have found a way to get there, but boy, the next week where he does that infamous die, Rocky die interview, and it turns into a big brawl between the nation and the Bariquas. And of course, somehow Jim Cornette's windshield just happens to get smashed that like week period there for the rock pretty major moment, not only in his history, but the WWF's future too. Right. I think that when you look at a lot of things, um, yeah, that was where rock was born and Rock going out and showed everybody, yeah, I can cut a promo. Yeah, I can be a heel. And I don't think that, that Rock really wanted to do it. For, I know Rock didn't want to do it at first. But it was a pivotal point that this now, it's coming to fruition what we were looking for Ron and the Nation of Domination to do, and that is to make people. And that is exactly what happened with Rock. And just the, the subtle, man, you go back and you, you watch the transition and the subtlety of the looks that Farouk would shoot Ron and vice versa was just magic. And, and they did a great job with it. So chat me up about the whole uh, brawl and Jim Cornette's windshield. I know you've told the story before, but this is uh, one worth repeating. Well, they had the big, God, what was it? It was a four-way, eight-way, 12-way, basically, big brawl in the back, Atlantic City. And they went into the parking area where the boys parked and employees and everything parked back by the truck. And it was all enclosed in a, in a garage, enclosed. And the guys went out, and they had this brawl, and they, you know, I think it, and it was uh, Kama actually is the one whose big back popped it, but they got on this, this one car and as it was, and it wasn't, wasn't a planned spot or anything like that, but all Kama did was roll. And so that he wouldn't damage the car because no one knew whose car it was. And he rolled. And when he rolled his back on the back windshield, the, the, the back window broke back windshield, the back window, it just popped and exploded. So it looked and sounded great and they kept going and it was an incredible moment. Then when this happened, everybody's looking around going, Hey, whose car is that? Cause we need to find whoever's car it is, let them know and get their car fixed and get it taken care of. Well, then it, was found out that it was Jim Cornette's car. Barry Windham came and got me and says, Hey man, need you to watch this. And I go and I go to watch the fight and everything, make sure everything's good. And I'm watching it. And I see the thing. I was like, so it was a pre tape. Oh, yeah. It's pre tape. Okay. Uh, it's like, Oh my God, who's and Barry's looking at me. He goes, it's Cornette's car. I said, will anybody tell him? This is not. That's why we came and got you. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. Um, so I said, okay, well, you know, I'll go find Jimmy and let him know what happened. And then Barry says, wouldn't it be great if he just watched it and saw it happen? Oh, God. Um, and then it came from that to where I'm like, okay, I'll bring him over here and say, hey, you got to watch this fight. And then he'll realize what happens. And then Barry says, he goes, what if he watched it live? So all day long, the rest of the day, people are, are playing it up and about how this great, great scene. Oh, they're hyping it up to him. They're hyping up the fight. Yeah. Like, oh my God, this thing was the greatest fight in the history of fights. Parking lot brawl, man. It was tremendous. And Corny's watching it at Gorilla live and putting it over Sees I'm this sure. happen and, and is ecstatic. Oh my God, this is the greatest fight in the world. Oh my God, this is awesome. This is awesome. Oh shit. Oh God damn. That was great. When the, when the window pops, and he's like, Oh, this, that, that's my car. That's my motherfucking car. 
and he's livid and takes off. And he's immediately mad at you and everyone else. Cause he thinks Everybody. that you guys did it intentionally. Yes. Yeah. And God is my witness. Um, you didn't know it was his car till afterwards. Well, first of all, uh, I didn't know it was nobody. It wasn't planned to go pop someone's back window. Right. It was an accident that happened during the fight and they kept going. Then afterwards they found out it was Corny's car. I went to get him. And then it was like, what if we did it this way? Um, okay. So if you're uh, guilty of something, you're guilty, I am of guilty of not telling him right then. Yes. Yeah. You. Yeah. Okay. But you didn't pop um, it. You didn't ask for anyone to pop it. No, yeah. no, not at all. 100%, 100% accident. So Corny, uh, leaves gorilla goes back and gets his bag and gets everything and leaves. And as he's leaving, he runs into, Oh God, it was the building manager and like the mayor of Atlantic city or a councilman or somebody with their kid. And they see Jim Cornette and they want an autograph and Cornette goes off and cuss out the little kid. Oh, motherfucker. I'll kill you. You know, son of a bitch. Um, he didn't do that. That was, that was a lot of fun. He didn't do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He cussed around the kid. He didn't cuss the kid. Well, according to them, oh, okay. he cussed the kid. Okay. Cause Vince and I had to go do damage control <laughs> on that one. <laughs> All right. Cause they came and they came to whoever was running that particular building and were like, Hey, what did one of your wrestlers just, you know, use the F word to my son and all this stuff. So, uh, corny takes off. Where does he go? Drives home. Oh, from Atlantic city, New Jersey to, uh, Monroe, Connecticut or wherever the hell he was living at the time. And with his back, back window out. And it was pretty cold out. So corny, we, we get home and I call corny. I leave a message. Vince calls corny, leaves a message, a few messages. Corny won't return anybody's call. Finally he answers the phone. I'm like, Jim, dude, it was an accident. Okay. Yes. You know, we, we had a little ha ha. We had some fun by, you know, waiting for you to watch it live, but, but it wasn't malicious. No one meant to break your window. Right. Oh, 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 we left out the most important part. So when Corny goes out and sees his back window popped out, oh no! Corny opens up the trunk and takes out a baseball bat and then beats the shit out of his car. Like, starts bashing his car in with the baseball bat. Why did he do that? Because he was mad. So then he throws the bat in, but in, do, in hitting his car with the baseball bat, he had broken the trunk, so he couldn't lock his trunk. Okay. You with me? Yep. So now as I'm talking to him, he says, yeah, goddamn, I was so mad. I was so fucking hungry that night. I was pissed off. And I said, well, okay, Jim, I mean, I understand being pissed, but again, it was nothing malicious. It wasn't intentional. And he, he says, yeah, but I was, I said, why didn't you stop and eat? Oh, they fucking placed eat goddamn, uh, on the, turnpike or whatever and it was like Roy Rogers and and I couldn't go in. I said, well, why couldn't you why couldn't you stop and go in? And he says, because my goddamn window was bashed out. I said, okay. But I mean what are they gonna steal? What is there to steal? I mean you throw your stuff in the trunk goes, well, that's the thing. I broke the fucking trunk half <laughs> a car with a baseball bat. So I had all my shit oh. my car and you know how these fucking Yankee motherfuckers are up here that if I had a bash in window and the truck bash in, they would steal all my shit. I don't think that they would have stolen your shit in the Roy Rogers parking lot. So anyway, he, he drove all the way home in a frenzy without any food because if he went inside to get a couple of roast beef sandwiches, they would have stolen all the shit and he was livid. And then he, Vince finally called him and he picked up and it's like, get your car fixed. We'll pay for it. But goddamn, man, you know, <laughs> chill out. And yeah, 
Good times. Good times. Savio. Savio wins the Steal tr- my shit. You're having fun with that, aren't you? Motherfucker. Thank you. Fuck you. Okay. Motherfucker. Alrighty. Fucker. Okay. <laughs> I get it. It's a wrestling podcast, but he's saving us money on our mortgage. Do you really trust this process? The reviews don't lie. Five star review after five star review. We make it fast. We make it easy and it's no cost or obligation. Give us a shot to earn your business. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did, especially if you like keeping more of your own money. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. So what are you waiting for? Hurry to save with Conrad.com. Coming out of this match or this cluster or this skirmish, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's, uh, in the dirt, in the dirt sheets, as you would call them, the rumor in innuendo is that Ron has upset some of the office because there's an issue with his weight. Do you remember that being a, a, a conscious conversation in 1998? I, I really don't recall that. And I, if anything, if Ron got heavy, I could see where someone probably pointed out, Hey, Ron, you need to get in better shape. But I, I don't recall that. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.